Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we are going to step into a strange, bizarre world based on a single hypothetical being what if everyone that Luffy actually asked to join the Straw Hats became a crew member? With the basic rule of our universe being that if Luffy does request a person join the crew, then they must say yes. And not only that, we're also very much going to examine how alternate universe crewmates may have affected the story going forward from that point, because our hypothetical does change a pretty incredible amount. It's it's a really good what if, you know, to examine what this series could have been if everyone Luffy actually wanted to become a straw hat was that agreeable. Before we get into that, I have an even better hypothetical though, which is what if you became a subscriber to the Grand Line Review? Well, I will tell you. You would receive regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. That's what would happen. And I think we should make that a reality, dear viewer, just as we are about to do with our other hypothetical here. And as for an example of what we're doing here today, let's take our piece. According to our rules, when Luffy asked her to join them on their adventure, she would have had to agree instead of staying on the Island of Dragon things. And then bam, we have to account for Arpice throughout the rest of the story. However, because Arpice is a filler character and does not indeed exist, she will not be here today. Apologies to Arpice fans, provided there are any. So let's go through One Piece with this very simple rule in mind. And right off the bat, we have a pretty, pretty insane change to make because during his childhood, Luffy actually asked both Ace and Sabo to join the crew. And instead of refusing Luffy, they now have to say yes meaning that we have our first two official straw hats, and this is going to cause us a fair few problems later down the line, but we don't have to worry about that for now. But basically then, Sabo's story will still play out more or less the same regardless. Yes, Luffy is now his captain, but he will still need to flee Dawn Island, have his whole fake out death scene, incur amnesia, and join the revolutionaries. Don't worry though, he will be back. But for now, the straw hats are left with two members, and Ace is now going to wait until Luffy is old enough to set sail. Then through various shenaniganry, this duo is going to make it to Shellstown, where Luffy hears of Ace certain swordsman, an opportunity that the rubber lad simply cannot resist. And neither can Zoro this time, who immediately accepts Luffy's offer instead of playing hard to get. Then Luffy, Zoro, and Ace proceed to defeat Captain Morgan and Helmeppo. Very important thing I should bring up about Ace though, actually, because he is now a straw hat, he will not become the user of the Mera Mera no Mi. And this is because Ace would not have become stranded on Sixus and therefore would not have found the fruit. That's all right, he's still pretty powerful regardless. Next up, we have Nami, a fairly simple situation because as soon as Luffy found out she was a navigator, he asked her to join the crew. But this time, Nami just says yes, and we don't have to deal with the whole betrayal of Baratier business. Instead, it's much more likely that Nami would just tell Luffy about Arlong, and they will make the trip to Kokuyashi Village to deal with him regardless. Much cleaner, albeit not quite as dramatically potent. Not quite at all, actually. But now is where another big change happens, because then we land on a strange island and meet the guardian of the forest, Gaimon. And after a touching scene involving empty treasure chests, Luffy demands that Gaimon join the crew. Crew. To which this time around, Gaimon is obviously going to say, yes, Captain. And thus, excluding Luffy, we now have our fifth official crew member who is a shrub in a box. But now things proceed quite smoothly into Syrup Village, where Luffy, Zoro, Nami, Ace, and Gaimon help to save the village from the Black Cat Pirates, and Usopp hops aboard. Very easy recruitment here. But all of this work has made us very hungry, so we're off to Baratier on the hunt for someone to provide frequent delicious dinners. And what do we find? Well, we find a Sanji, would be the dude's name. And as per the one universal constant of this video, Sanji says yes to Luffy immediately. And if anything, this whole Don Creek situation goes much smoother because the Straw Hats aren't split up by Nami's betrayal due to there being no betrayal. Although Zoro still gets pretty messed up by Mihawk. But with Sanji in tow, we now head to Kokuyashi Village, where this intriguing incarnation of the Straw Hats takes down Arlong, frees Nami up, and now we're pretty much ready to head into the Grand Line. And after doing so, our first stop is Reverse Mountain to acquire yet another crewmate, this time being Old Man Crocus. After discovering that Crocus was a doctor, Luffy very excitedly offered him the chance to become the doctor of the Straw Hats. And when I say offered, let's remember that Luffy more often than and not demands things rather than offers. And his exact wording was something like, you're a doctor, then become our doctor. And in this world, Crocus does need to accept this. So the Straw Hats now have a ridiculously powerful ally at their side. Laboon does, however, remain at Reverse Mountain, having now become Luffy's rival and will await the future Pirate King's return. Also of note is that during Reverse Mountain and the ensuing Whiskey Peacock, we do pick up Vivi masquerading as Miss Wednesday as well as Karu, but they are not asked to join the crew as of yet. And now we have some pretty massive stuff to 
change though, because after Whiskey Peak comes Little Garden, which is fine. This happens mostly as per we know it. And Nami ends up catching her deadly disease. Now, generally this would be the obvious path to Drum Island. However, at this stage, we now already have a doctor being Crocus, a pretty phenomenal doctor as well, having once treated the Pirate King directly. So this rather unfortunately means that Crocus is likely going to be more than capable of dealing with Nami's ailment, meaning that we bypass Drum Island altogether and move straight onwards to Alabaster, which is kind of annoying because in addition to losing Chopper, we also lose Dr. Kuroha because in the series, Luffy did ask her to join the crew as well. However, that's all pretty redundant with Crocus aboard. And I guess the biggest loss is of course the Straw Hat mascot, but to replace our cute reindeer, we now have a shrub in a box, so never fear. Cotton Candy Lover Gaimon will be more than capable of carrying the series from here on out. So we reach Alabaster much earlier than we would have otherwise, meaning that there is every chance that Vivi does arrive in time to meet with Koza and prevent the civil war on Alabaster from kicking into full gear. Even if not though, the events are still going to play out with Crocodile being defeated, but in a grand twist, Vivi is not going to stay on the island. Instead, both she and Karu are going to pursue their vague dreams of piracy and become regular members of the ever-growing Straw Hat Pirates. Oh, and let's not forget Robin. She will still stow away aboard the Going Merry and work her way into the Straw Hats as per usual. I mean, no, Luffy does not ask her, but he does agree, so that does not break our one rule. From here, we need to skip forward a fair bit because Jaya, Skypier, and Long Ring Longland offer us very little in terms of crew pickings. So we're going to end up on Water 7 to fix the Going Merry, and here we encounter an iceberg, a mere iceberg to be precise. And Luffy, being Luffy, once again discovers a useful talent and then invites Iceberg, or in Luffy's words, Old Man, to become the shipwright of the Straw Hats. And despite being both the mayor of Water 7 and the president of Galilar, Iceberg is going to have a rather abrupt change of heart and agree to become a pirate. Hooray! Due to the tight timing though, the Cypher Pole assassination attempt will still likely happen, leaving Iceberg injured and thus unable to accompany his new captain to any slobby in order to take Robin back. However, meeting Robin on the judicial island will be Luffy, Zoro, Nami, Saga King, Sanji, Gaimon, Ace, Crocus, Vivi, and Karu. So this is probably still going to go fairly well, or at least as well as it did originally, especially since Frankie is still very much present during these events. Speaking of though, Frankie is a bit of a question mark here. There is very little doubt in my mind that after any slobby, he still would have built the Thousand Sunny for the Straw Hats, along with Iceberg, their now official shipwright. And I think an argument can be made either way. On the one hand, Luffy is a simple guy and he doesn't tend to double up on roles. Then again, Frankie did build the ship and the Frankie family is still going to beg Luffy to take Frankie with them due to his newfound global infamy. So with that in mind, I think what happens is that both Frankie and Iceberg join the crew and become dual shipwrights, which is kind of nice because they were both apprentices of Tom, although it does leave Water 7 without a figurehead. Oh well, that is not our problem. Sailing straight into Thriller Bark now, we immediately encounter Brooke and he joins the crew. Very simple affair there. Although we do still need to help him out with the whole shadow business. So we are coming into conflict with Gecko Moria. Much more importantly than our penis necked warlord though, this means stumbling across both Zombie Tree and Zombie Unicorn, both of whom Luffy tries to capture and vigorously persuade to join the Straw Hats. Only this time, he succeeds. With both of the zombies all of a sudden having a change of heart, discovering hopes and dreams outside of their standard days of drinking peacefully in the dark, dank, foggy atmosphere of Thriller Bark. Really sad turn of events now though, because as a result of Moria's inevitable defeat, Zombie Tree and Zombie Unicorn shadows are going to be returned to their original owners, meaning that these two members will be very, very short-lived straw hats, as well as I suppose the first case of a straw hat death that is not the going merry. And so at the end of Thriller Bark, the straw hats are going to hold a respectful funeral for their lost crew members and are then forced to continue onwards, which takes us to Sabadi, where despite the fact that we have figures such as Ace and Crocus, the straw hats are still going to be defeated and separated by Bartholomew Kuma. But this is where things start to get really, really difficult, and mostly because of Ace. He's been with us the entire time now, and as such, he has no association with Whitebeard, and he might not even have a bounty of his own, although he probably does. Very importantly though, this means that Ace does not become a target of Blackbeard in any way, shape, or form, and it actually kind of prevents the entirety of the Paramount War from even happening. For this event to occur, Blackbeard would need to capture another member of the Whitebeard Pirates, none of whom were as brash as Ace, so this whole scenario seems nigh on impossible to achieve. Which also may potentially mean no time skip because Luffy isn't truly aware of just how weak he is anymore. And this also goes on to change a whole ton because Jinbei no longer needs to resign from the Warlords, nor does he actually meet Luffy, and it's entirely possible that he never does. But because One Piece is a story centered mostly around fate, I have to conclude that Luffy will decide on 
on the two-year training period. Otherwise, the entire crew would be wiped out very, very early on in the new world. So if you do want that ending, then feel free to stop here, I guess. But if we proceed with the time skip and the crew reunite, all 13 of them now, we will then go on to Fishman Island. And quite frankly, I don't think Jinbei is there due to still being a warlord. And even if he is, he has no association with Luffy. And it's very hard to see the captain asking Jinbei to join his crew without that background. But since that is massive, massive speculation, we'll say that the blood transfusion happens. Luffy asks Jinbei anyway, to which the whale shark has no excuses this time around. And he just says, yes, Luffy Kun. We are far from done though, because Punk Hazard is now going to bring us a new series of members, one of which would be Kinemon's legs. And yes, I mean his legs specifically Specifically. Luffy did not, I repeat, did not ask the rest of Kinemon to join the crew, so we are just taking his legs. The rest of Kinemon can of course come aboard as a traveling companion, but only his legs are an official straw hat. On Punk Hazard, Luffy also asked Random Centaur to join the crew as well, and this Leopard Centaur dude is now very, very compelled to do so. So uh, yay, we now have this. So we then continue to make the alliance with Law and proceed to Dress Rosa, where we do not recruit a new member. However, we do regain an old member. Having been sent there to investigate Dolphamingo's weapon trade, Sabo comes across Luffy and regains his memories, thus deciding to leave the Revolutionary Army and rejoin his captain. And in this universe, this would reunite what would be known as the OG monster trio, being Luffy, Ace, and Sabo. And at this point in the story, that pretty much concludes the makeup of the alternate universe draw hats. Going forward, this band would then have to tackle the rest of Dress Rosa, Zoe, Hulk Ake Island, and now Wano. But there you have it. This is the crew that could have been if every character was as agreeable as Luffy wished they would be. Not quite the Straw Hats we know, but still an undeniable powerhouse team nonetheless. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.